From the time an American child reaches the sixth grade, they are taught that the key to success in life is to do well in high school so that they can get accepted to the best possible college. The better grades they get in high school, the better college they will have an opportunity to get into. They are taught that if they get into a great college and get their college degree, any type of job they desire in the field of their choice will be there waiting for them. After getting their dream job, they will be able to buy any car and house they desire, start their own family, and live the American dream. Most Americans today have an expectation of future economic success simply by obtaining a college degree. The entire purpose of elementary school is to prepare students for high school, and the entire purpose of high school is to prepare students for college. In fact, the U.S. now has hundreds of private college preparatory high schools that, at a cost of $25,000 per year, are supposed to increase students' chances of getting into a top-tier college. Students are taught to believe that if they don't go to college, they will be on a path to nowhere and will have no chance of ever building a successful career. Government regulations like No Child Left Behind have left grade and high schools in shambles. Instead of teachers having the freedom to think outside the box and use creative techniques to prepare their students for the real world, they are forced to be narrow-minded and teach with worthless information that will never help their students have successful careers. Today, there are no high schools left in America that teach students the knowledge necessary to start their own business, invent their own product, or even how to use the internet and other free resources to become educated about things without attending college. The annual cost to attend the average private four-year college in America today is $27,293, up 29% from five years ago during the 2005-2006 school year when the annual tuition cost $21,235. This does not include the cost of textbooks, which have tripled over the past decade. Colleges are now charging $200 for each single textbook that has no resale value because they put out new, slightly revised versions with a new name each year. The textbook publishers are even colluding with college bookstores to make custom textbooks so that students can't save money by buying them online. Colleges are getting kickbacks from publishers in order to destroy the used textbook market, which by itself is proof enough that college administrators are only interested in lining their own pockets and have no interest in helping their students. You have to have a certain kind of brain to understand the dead language that they write in textbooks. But they brainwash you from a little kid up so that you buy into the system and you get good grades and you study hard and then you become a member of the total system. No freedom. You don't know how to think because they told you how to think their way. College tuition has seen 5.15% annual price inflation over the past five years. This is despite the fact that U.S. real estate prices are down 26% from their peak in July of 2006. And the Dow Jones is down 18% from its peak in October of 2007. Even oil is down 38% from its peak in July of 2008. During the financial crisis of 2008, Americans lost $10.2 trillion in paper wealth. And college is the only thing in America, besides the cost of health care, that did not at least temporarily decline in price. Inflation has made it impossible. Again, when I was a kid, it wasn't, you never heard parents saying, we're planning and putting money away for your education because it's going to cost us $100,000 and we have to keep putting that money away so that when you graduate, not only will you not pay us back, you're not even going to get a job.
Over just a two-year period from December of 2007 through December of 2009, 8,363,000 jobs in America were lost, or 6.1% of total jobs. One year later, in December of 2010, thanks to the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government spending $4.6 trillion on bailouts, stimulus programs, and other government spending, 1.124 million jobs in America, or 0.9% of total jobs, had been recovered. That is over $4 million spent for each job created. As we move into deeper into this great recession that we believe as inflation continues to skyrocket, the reality of a Great Depression will come in because people will realize that all that worthless money you have can't buy you much of anything. You're going to see more and more people, as they're already doing it, believing that they're, by going to college, that's going to be their passport to the future. It's not what it used to be. A degree, a college degree, a BS, what does that buy you? And I love the mentality. The mentality is this, that corporations and businesses won't hire a person unless they get a degree. <laughs> Not me. I don't care if you have a degree. It makes absolutely no difference. I want you to have a mind, be able to think for yourself and think on your feet and be energetic and love what you're doing and have a passion in so many different other ways. Not to be able to just regurgitate what, what you're being told. And that's all it's come to, it's regurgitation. During an economic downturn when Americans are losing their jobs, their primary instinct is to seek higher education in order to make themselves more attractive to potential employers and better position themselves to receive a job. However, how are Americans supposed to spend $27,293 per year for college when they have no savings or income to pay for it? The U.S. government, with the backing of the Federal Reserve, in the same way they created the real estate bubble, by providing mortgages to all Americans through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, regardless of whether or not they had any capacity to pay the loans back, has been using the exact same easy lending practices to create one of the largest bubbles in U.S. history, the college bubble. College students borrowed $106 billion in total student loans for the 2009-2010 school year, up from $96 billion in 2008-2009, $94 billion in 2007-2008, $87 billion in 2006-2007, and $83 billion in 2005-2006. Total student loan debt in the U.S. currently stands at $830 billion and now exceeds credit card debt. I was so pro-education. That's all I wanted in my life was an education. And, and you know, I'd like to still be pro-education, right. but to put anybody through what I've been through, no. Really, in my case, the education, I think, really ruined my life. Yeah. So, I mean, I would have been better off if I just would have gone to work at, you know, McDonald's or something, <laughs> actually. Uh -huh. so. That is unbelievable. Because yeah, this is a debt I can never get over. The U.S. government created Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in order to make housing more affordable. But instead, their actions drove housing prices through the roof and made buying a house impossible for most Americans unless they took out no money down teaser loans with interest rates that substantially increased after a year or two. The U.S. government has been trying for decades to make college more affordable, but its actions have accomplished the complete opposite effect. College is now impossible for most students to afford without getting deeply into debt to do so. All across the country, Americans are graduating college with mortgages before they even buy a house. When I graduated from my undergraduate degree, I had $300 in student loans that I owed. $300.
you know, you can you can hardly buy two cups of coffee and a and a and a meal at the student union these days for three hundred bucks. So when I graduated with my undergraduate degree, uh, what what you got in exchange for your education was lifetime indenture and a new house. Right, so you got to buy the mortgage. That's what you got. You got your degree. You got out of school. You, you got a job, and therefore you bought a house because culture drives you to buy a house. So now you're in debt. You have to work. Now you have to be part of the, the wage slave economy for the next 20 or 30 years until the house is paid off. These days, college is the new house, and you don't even get the house. As soon as you get out of school, you're indentured for life. When you started taking out loans, what kind of debt did you end up getting into, and how much have you been able to pay off, and how much I, you still have? I was, when I walked out of dental school, I was $136,000 in debt, um, and I have paid in close to $100,000 right now. They say I owe $300,000, uh, so I still have quite a bit, obviously, that I can't manage anymore. Um, and I've done everything I can to try to manage it, but it becomes unmanageable at a certain point. One of the loans, the HEAL loan, um, was a um, health occupation loan. And when that defaulted, um, then it, I can no longer um, see Medicare or Medicaid patients. So it's, I'm very selective of where I can even work anymore. Wow. Because I'm, it's, it ties my hands. As I, if I wanted to go into indigent care or one of the free clinics or something, I couldn't. Right. When I was first told this, I was told by my attorney, that I would not get Medicare or Medicaid. I said, well, okay, you know what I mean? There's not much I can do. And for many years, that's what I believed because that's what he thought it right. meant. Well, comes to find out that's not what it was at all. It was that I was not able to work on patients in Medicare wow. or Medicaid. And so um, when I went to work for uh, this place that I'm working, um, I thought we were fine because we don't take them. Well, there happens to be some federal employees that now I can't see I didn't even realize that. And so when the office manager, when we realized that the office manager sent a note to him and said, you know, what's the deal? And they said, well, she knows all about this. <laughs> no, I don't know about it. Neither do the attorneys and neither does anybody else. I mean, this, these laws are so vague. It's just amazing. So now I have to watch who I see. Um, and fortunately, my employer has worked with me or I would be out of a job, basically. Um, but they're very... Um, vague and uh, they keep you in the dark uh, they don't really um, try to help you or figure any of this out they don't work with you I know there's the new income based repayment but I don't fall into any of that you know so I don't know I just don't want to see it happen to anybody else right. that's there's, my problem there's no compassion right. there. there's, there's no, no, help, no help no compassion nothing they're just vultures Back in the 1970s, the average college student was able to afford their college tuition without any student loans or help from their parents. They were able to pay for college by working a part-time job year-round or by simply working full-time during the summer when they were off from school. Not only that, but they were also able to afford their own car payments and possibly a small apartment. The U.S. government destroyed this by providing easy student loans to anybody who applied for them without any credit requirements. Over the past decade, any 18-year-old has had the ability to take out large student loans without even being asked if they have a job, what their high school grades were, what they intend to major in, or any other information that would help determine their future ability to pay back the loan. These are, uh, this is a paper, and this is, of course, a copy, I have the original, of what they gave me the day I graduated from dental school. What amount, uh, income level, I would have to make, and how much of that would go to school loans, and um, what percentage. First off, I never even made enough in a month to pay the monthly uh, school loan uh, amount, so... Uh, that's no, why it went into default. Right. And they basically made just completely unrealistic Unrealistic. Un totally make, unrealistic, right? yes. Um, I've, I've not even managed to make any of them wow. at all. So um, <sighs> this year, of course, they're projecting I would clear about 260000 oh, And I'm making about eighty. 
And where do they so, come up with these numbers? Well, I'm not sure, and I, I, I mean, think they, uh, I think that four, was the whole over four hundred thousand in, in two thousand and fifteen, oh, which wow. will not ever happen. The problem is it also is your percentage of of your school of what they're taking. Um, I know it's been proposed at ten percent, and I think that is a fair amount. But at some points, I paid as much as thirty four percent of 